Hey guys, Laura Whitmore here with STP. Have you guys noticed that the math problems on the digital SAT have really been kicked up a few notches in difficulty, especially with the last 10 or so problems in module two? So many students I've been working with have complained to me that those problems take them so long to solve if they even get it at all. And when they don't get it and they go to read the answer explanation, it looks like this. Crazy, I know. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is cover a way easier way to solve these problems. It'll take you less time, you'll have a way better chance of getting them right, and then that'll give you more time to be able to go back and check your other answers and maybe even get a perfect score on the math. So stick around, I've got four really difficult problems I'm gonna walk through with you from Blue Book Test 4, and I'm gonna show you how to do all of them using the Desmos calculator. You can actually use the Desmos calculator more than you think. All right, so if you really like this strategy and it works out well for you, which I'm sure it's going to, all I ask is that you split your scholarships with me 50-50. 80-20. All right, I'll take 10%. Last offer. All right, guys, so this is the first one that we're gonna look at together. Now, Desmos works great for systems, so if they give you two equations, I want you to automatically think, all right, I'm gonna go in and use my Desmos calculator. I'm gonna type in these equations. And I'm going to add a slider for the A. Because what it's asking is, it says the system has um, exactly one distinct real solution. So if there's one distinct real solution, that means they're going to cross at exactly one point. So if I have a quadratic, let me zoom out a little bit, and a line, I want the vertex to touch the line and that's it. You guys, take a look at this. Look at this answer explanation from College Board. Like, are you kidding me? College board, no, no college board. Like this is just so ridiculous. And honestly, solving these graphically is way better than solving them algebraically. So if I wanna find out what A is gonna be, which is the Y intercept of the quadratic, when there's one solution, I'm gonna move A around and I wanna shift it up. I'm trying to get that vertex to touch the line. You see how I'm not quite there yet? What I have to do is I have to change the range of A because right now it's going from negative 10 to 10. So let me just make it from like negative five to 50, okay? And what I'm gonna do too is I'm gonna add in a step of 0.1 because I wanna be able to move it incrementally just in case there's like a decimal or whatever. So we're gonna try that out and I'm gonna keep moving it and keep moving it. Now, as you can see with my mouse, when I get to, when I scroll it to 14.5, it's exactly on, the vertex is exactly on the line. Do you guys see that? So that means A equals 14.5. When that happens, as you can see, it crosses up here 14.5. And as you can see, the correct answer actually was 14.5. Easy peasy, way better than doing all of that the College Board's telling you to do. All right guys, I'm about to get to the next problem, but if you thought that that first example was helpful, make sure to hit the thumbs up button below. All right, this next one has a couple constants in it, an A and a B, and it says the product of the solutions to the given equation is K times A times B, where K is a constant. Well, I already know that that's a quadratic because our highest exponent is squared, so there should be two solutions crossing the x-axis. When we graph it, we're gonna look for that. But look at this, you guys, look at this explanation. Have you guys been seeing this on Blue Book? Like, what is this? No, I would never ever tell my students to do all of that. Do not do all of that, please. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna type it back, the whole equation into Desmos. Okay, I'm gonna add a slider for both A and B. Now, just make sure that you are doing what they're asking for. It says A and B are positive constants. Do you guys see that? 
So we just have to make sure that we keep A and B as positive numbers. Let me just zoom out just a little bit so you can see what's going on here. So right now we have a very narrow, narrow parabola. I could like mess with this and move these around and make it wider. Um, but honestly, I actually like A and B to be one because I just think it's easy and I'll explain why. When A and B are one, and I zoom in, I can see what the solutions are. So we've got a solution at um, negative 1 and at negative 0 0.018. Okay, so that means um, negative 1 times negative 0 0.018. That's the product of the solution. So it would be a positive 0 0.018. Okay, if A and B are 1 and then we multiply by K, that means K is gonna have to be equal to 0 0.018 because one times one times 0 0.018 will get us the product of the solutions, which is 0 0.018. So when you look at all the answer choices, they don't have it in decimal form. What you'll have to do is just in your calculator divide. So I could even pull up a calculator right now, or I could use Desmos too, but I'm in the graphene, so I just don't wanna have to deal with that right now. So we've got one divided by 57 and that rounds to 0 0.018, so it's gonna be A. And as you can see, the answer is A, so go Desmos! So much easier than doing all of that. Okay, let's go to the next one. All right guys, well, I'm looking for that next problem. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, make sure to hit the subscribe button below so you don't miss out on future content from me to help you get ready for the DSAT. All right, so this next one is a circle equation and they want the circle's radius. Yes, you can complete the square and do a whole bunch of stuff. It is equal to a nasty fraction, so that's gonna be annoying. Look at their answer explanation, you guys. No, why? Why would you torture yourself? So I'm gonna do the same thing as the others. I'm gonna type this equation into Desmos. All right guys, so we have the circle graphed and as you can see, it's a little off centered. So be very careful. You can't assume the center is at zero and then just go, oh, okay. So it's gonna be a uh, radius of 9.487. Don't do that because of course they're gonna try to throw you off and make it like a little bit different than what you would assume. But what you can do is just find out how long the diameter is and divide it in half. So here's like an endpoint. I've got an endpoint at 9.5. And then if I go down here, I have another endpoint at negative 10.5. Now that's a distance of 20 units. Divide that in half, your radius is 10 and you're done. And as you can see here, the correct answer is 10. So that's it. Just a heads up, if you want more math problems to prep from for the DSAT, make sure to download Preply in the App Store or in Google Play today so that you can keep prepping for the math with an array of additional problems that are just like those on Blue Book. Okay, so this last one is super tricky and involves a little logical reasoning, but you can still use Desmos to help you get the answer. So it says in the XY plane, a parabola has vertex nine, negative 14 and intersects the x-axis at two points. Okay, if the vertex is at nine, negative 14, I'm gonna go ahead and type in an equation in vertex form. So the only thing we don't know is the A. We don't know if it's flipping up or down. We don't know if it's wide or narrow. So I'm just gonna leave it as an A and put a slider in. Now that should be an X minus nine because the vertex uh, X coordinate changes the sign. So if it's a nine, then it should be a minus nine in the parentheses. And the Y coordinate stays the same at negative 14. Let's add in a slider and we're gonna start to mess with this. Now it said that it intersects the X axis at two points. So as you guys can see, our vertex is down here. So if our vertex is in quadrant four and it's like in this negative Y area, we have to have an A that's positive because this parabola has to be able to flip up to have two solutions crossing the X axis, okay? So we know A needs to be positive. If we mess with this, Look at once you get past uh, positive point one, oh, now it's flat, and now it goes down, and now it's not crossing anymore. So A's gotta be a positive number. Now we know B in the quadratic, that's, that's a left and right shift. 
So since this parabola is shifted to the right, that means B is negative. And it looks like when we mess with this, we mess with the A, for the most part, check that out, C is positive. C is where the y-intercept is. There's only one time where C is negative. So A has to be positive. C, for the most part, is positive. The only one that's negative is B. So use your logical reasoning. If A and C are positive and B is negative, you've gotta pick the smallest negative number out of the bunch. And that's why it's gonna be D. So much easier to do with Desmos and a little logical reasoning versus this. Check out this answer explanation. Oh my gosh, I read this. This is one of the biggest ones and I literally laughed out loud when I was working with my student. All right guys, that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. We have tutors, by the way, so if you want to dive into the math deeper and review concepts and learn how to do these problems one-on-one, -on -one, go ahead and contact us. Here's the link to the form, and we will be in touch with you soon. Thanks, guys, for watching. Until next time, happy prepping.